in, in, within, within the grasp of their hand, the reach of their hand. It was physical. It was right. They, they could know that God actually was there. They knew and they saw and they had the evidence. And all through, at the last point in time in history, what happened? Yeshua came. Yeshua came, born of a virgin, who lived as a man, grew in wisdom and knowledge, taught in the synagogue and in the temple, and now started to do something. Tofel. To tofel means to care, and it means basically that you can have you have two basic words for it. Uh, tofel, if you have the tav beginning. Right? And it means a lack. Require additional effort. Right? A lack. A lack. And that which require additional effort. Tofel. So. Okay? Tofel. And this means lack. Tofel, and that means lack. Now, you're going to see something. And it required additional effort. So now, when you care for something, that means that is lacking something that required more what? Effort. Now, Yeshua, when, when he came, you see Israel, they had tradition, custom. And it was so rich and in, ingrained in them that they lived it. We know Yeshua, I think it's in Matthew, in one of the Gospels, when he said, And the woman pressed her way through, and she touched, the translator say what? The hem of his garment. garment right? She touched his what? His zitzit. Lovesh zitzit. His covering zitzit. So it's seeing that Yeshua practice the tradition of his culture. Tofel. And we have Tofel, right? Right? And this means to, to attach. So you have two words that say Tofel? Yeah. Yes. One, the two simties, but this one is the tet. This one is the tav. Now, Hebrew, Hebrew is very specific. This one means to attach and this one means to lack. Why is that? To us, that doesn't mean anything. That just, oh, just words. When the Hebrew, when the sages and they were inspiredly ordained to write scripture, just as Timothy says, 2 Timothy 2.15, um, let's say, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for edification, rebuke, and comfort in righteousness. Let's paraphrase it. This lack to fail. Now, in, in Hebraic culture, what they do at that particular point in time Somebody find Matthew 23, 5 for me. Matthew 23, 23, 5. Quickly. Wow, you guys are good Bible scholars. You got that already? So now, if we, when we understand these words and how it, how it relates to us now, we're going to see we get a different understanding on what Yeshua is really saying to us, to care. So now we see seeing that to care means, one, someone lacking, and two, at a touch. So we're seeing that this word, basically, same song, and if you just change it in Hebrew, once you change the, vo the, the, the vowel, the vowel in itself, within the context of the word, or the use of the word, within the context, it carries the strength of the word. So if I put a, a kamatz, or um, um, a herik under these letters, it actually changed the sound, and it changed the meaning of the word. And that and all too, it's, it's, a, it's a volume of information. Did you all find it for me? Yeah. Okay. 
23, 5. Right, read it for me. Eight. Read the verse before and then read it and read the verse after. Matthew 23 from verse 4. Go ahead. They tie up heavy loads. I read from verse 1. Then Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples. The scribes and the Pharisees are seated in their chair, in the chair of Moses. Therefore, do whatever they tell you and observe it. But don't do what they do, because they don't practice what they teach. They tie up every loads that are hard to carry and put them on people's shoulders. But they themselves aren't willing to lift a finger to move them. They do everything to be observed by others. They enlarge their phylactery. phylacteries and lengthen their tassels. Okay. That's right. Go ahead, go ahead. They love the place of honor at banquets, the front seats in the synagogues, greeting in the marketplaces, and to be called rabbi by people. Good. That is it? But as for you, do not be called rabbi, because you have one teacher, and you are all brothers. Do not call anyone on earth your father, because you have one father who is in heaven. heaven. And do not be called masters either, because you have one master, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. You lock up the kingdom of heaven from people. For you don't go in, and you don't allow these, those ent entering to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. You devour widows' houses and make long prayers just for show. This is why you will receive a harsher punishment. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. You travel over land and sea See to too. make one proselyte. Yeah, proselyte. Okay, and you can somebody after the second, after the last, um, the next verse, you can stop it. And when he becomes one, you make him twice as fit for hell as you are. Woe to you, blind guides, who say, whosoever takes an oath by the sanctuary, it means nothing. But, what's, but whosoever takes an oath by the gold of the sanctuary is bound by his oath. Okay. All right. That's see the word and the reading of Hashem's word. Now, one word that come out there, and it's a word that I can pronounce very well. What it was? Phylactery, right? Yeah. Phylactery. And what is a phylactery? What is the phylactery that they're wearing? And what is the, and it said by there, tassel, right? So we know they're talking about what? Zitzit. And they're talking about the keeper. They're talking about Small leather boxes on the head. Old Testament text worn by Jews on their arms and forehead. That's right. So it's one way on their arms and their forehead. Why is that? But now they're wearing these things and they are now being seen by many and by everyone in in that um, culture at that day, right? And that in itself, it actually show you that. What Hashem has spoken, and if you go into Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 8, you're going to see there where Yeshua said, Now take my word and write it where? On your heart. On your heart and where? Tie it around your foreheads and write it on the doorposts of your house and on your, bind it around your hands, your head and your hand. Why the head and the hand? Why the head and the hand? Now, in Hebrew, this word is called what? Tefillin. Tefillin. Tefilli. Right? Tefilli. Now, what do you need for Tefillin? Tefill. To fell, to fell, the, as, as I said again, the vowel gives the what? The pronunciation or the con contextual what? Meaning of the word. 
So within the context or within the text in which the author is speaking, you get the meaning of the, the word as it is used. So now if I, if I put a, what is this? A nun. If I put a nun at the end, what I get? Tefalin. Ah. So now you're seeing that the phylactery that they use, it's what? Attached to whom? Themselves. It's attached to themselves. So it does attach to the tip. Oh, fell on the top. It means they're locking themselves. Am I correct? They what? If that was attached to the top one, the, the line, that means it would be locking in themselves. The locking in? Yeah, because that would be tackling. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. That's right. But it has the... the and even you, you put it right here also. Tefaline, right? So now what you're actually seeing, you're seeing that there is a lack in who? In whomever is wearing this garment. Now, in the Jewish tradition, there are depths and wealth of information in one letter. Because what the sages will teach you that from one letter, the whole Torah is known. Like in the mitzvot, the commandment, Shema, or, or um, love the Lord your God, the first commandment, the first commandment, hear O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. That is it. From that first commandment, hang all the laws and prophet. And that is what Yeshua said, right? So now, Yeshua is saying that you care, but all you care about is looking how? Good for who? The people.